Hey, what's going on guys? Me, Box 12 here with another character guide. And last time we did Archer, this time we're going to do Paladin, another one of my favorite classes. And I have him maxed 8-8, and there is a good reason for that. In fact, there's a lot of good reasons for that. And I'll get into more further explanations later. Um, but first, I'm going to talk to you once again about his gear, like I did with the Archer, and how it's important to the character and, you know, like, different types of gear for different types of reasons, and, you know, all that complicated stuff, so. Yeah, let's jump right into this. Alright, so the first thing that we gotta get across is that the Paladin is a melee, therefore he uses both the sword and the armor. Now, which sword and which armor you use is entirely up to you in your style of gameplay. Me, I like to get my damage in, and I like to not take as much damage, which I think is the preferred thing for everybody, so I use the Acclaim. Now, some people like to use Ancient Stone Sword, and it's a good sword for Pally because you can boost and do about 800 damage with it, or 700, something like that. And yes, that's amazing. However, you fire so slow that by the time you've done about, say, 1600 damage with your Stone Sword, you could have already done about 2k with the Acclaim because it fires faster and therefore you got more damage in. The Stone Sword, I would say, is used only whenever you can get a few hits in. Like, say, O2. I've, this example has been used before. You're running in, can only get one shot, so you circle him, hit him once with the Stone Sword, you pally buff. All I know is that Acclaim is going to be your friend most of the time. D-Blade and Seasword are my primary swap outs. I don't really use Stone Sword. I do have one, but I feel as though I want to save that. It kind of just looks cool in your vault. I'll use it every now and then, maybe whip it out for like, I don't know, a dun like a tomb. They're good in tombs, but, you know. Now, armor is a completely different story. I like candy coated. Now, you want to know why? Because the paladin only has 25 death. Max is at 25, just like the warrior. So you're wondering, why do paladins need CC and not warriors? Well, good sir, I will tell you. Because warriors get an extra 10 death from their helmet. What do Paladins get? Extra 5 speed on Oreo. Yeah, we don't get any death from that. We, we pretty much just have a plain old 50 whenever we're maxed. So the Paladin needs that extra death, and I think that extra 6 death from the Candy Coated is really amazing. I mean, it's entirely up to you. If you rarely ever get hit, I'd say go a crop, because yes, the Candy Coated does take down 10 decks, so you do fire slower. But in the long run, that defense will really come in handy, so I would highly recommend going Candy Coated. Which is exactly the same reason why we don't use Res, which is the Resurrected Warrior's armor, because 17 def? Are you kidding me? Paladin plus 17 def equals no. Okay, just, just no. Next on the agenda, we have the Seal, the Paladin's pride and joy. Now, there are two seals that you can use. One of which is known as G-Cookie because it's golden, it's round, and it kind of just looks like a cookie, nothing really to it. And then we have Oreo, which to go with the cookie theme is, you know, it's black, so what cookie's black? Oreo! So, yeah, now, yeah you're a pro, hey. And so what G-Cookie does is for 10 seconds, you and your allies are healing, and you're doing more damage. So it's a really great effect, and so that's what makes him a great support class or a solo class, because you can boost yourself or your allies, so that's what's really awesome. However, Oreo is a different story. Yes, G-Cookie boosts for 10 seconds, um, whereas Oreo only boosts for 5, so it's definitely inferior uh, in that way. However, there is one major detail that separates the two seals from each other, and that is invincibility. Oreo has 1.4 seconds of invincibility. That is incredible. I mean, Jug, yes, it doubles your defense, but there's only so much damage you can reduce. Invincibility cannot be undone. There is n the, not even armor break, it doesn't matter. You will not take damage for 1.4 seconds. Nut Rage, Jeb Rage, Best Rage. If I had to give invincibility to any class, it would have to be the Paladin because they need it. Honestly, I think it's the Paladin is just not used enough today, or at least in comparison to Knight and Warrior, because Knight is just a fun class, Warrior is just OP. And so now, so is the Paladin. And finally, we have the Ring. Honestly, you could use Pyrrha for every single class. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to recommend Pyramid Ring to every class that you make. But if you want to switch it up a bit, 
like say with Nile. Nile is fun on melees for that extra speed so that you can rush, and the decks so that you can counteract the effects of Candy Coated. And of course, more MP is always great. Something that I've noticed about the Paladin is that he's very combination heavy. You can use an endless combination of UT items, such as Stone Sword, uh, G Cookie, a Crop, Pura. The combinations are endless. But in all honesty, you really do not need those items. You can use the lowest tier, I would say lowest tier 10 is usually a safe bet, and you're perfectly fine. You don't need any of those fancy items. It's just a bonus at the end whenever you've maxed him. Some people are pally people, other people aren't. And all I can say is go out and try it. It's a fun class. So yeah, I hope that this guide helped you in some way. I know it's not perfect, but hopefully you've taken a note a mental note on my gameplay and a couple of tips that i've given you and uh yeah thanks for watching this has been talwar's top tips and i will see you in the next episode all right see ya